Hello once again everybody, how's your summer going? Mine's going pretty good. I got to go back to my family and visit them this summer. I also saw a bear, actually two bears, I came within 30 feet of them. It's quite terrifying. Actually it was pretty good. I was pretty calm through the whole ordeal. It was quite amazing. So, what else is amazing is that we've got some brand new inventory that's come all the way from Stevens International out in New Jersey. And these model kits are available at www.monster-hobbies.ca. You can buy them right now. But before we get into that, I thought I would open up the box with everybody and show you what's inside and what to expect from Monster Hobbies. So without further delay, let's go down and see what's in the box. Here we are at our bench, and I've got my old scout knife here, so we'll start to open this box up. Lots of excitement in here. I have a model kit in here that I've been waiting for 40 years to actually get. So we get to check that out. So here we got our invoice again. That'll help me price all this up. Just put it up under the box. Today I'm outside and I don't really need this stuff to blow away. <laughs> okay. So here we are. Okay, so first up, oh, I'm kind of casting a shadow in here. We have the AMT Jolly Green Gasser. Now this is the 1965 Ford Galaxy kit. It's got the opening trunk and the gauges and the rear axle, steering wheel, the front end and our engine, as well as your options of wheels right there. Hopefully you can see this okay. <laughs> then here we have the stock version of the car. But you can also build it custom. This one has been out a few times, but it's now back in the old 1960s style uh, box with our green giant grabbing the car. And further on that, we also have the, the Betcher Sweet Bippy right here. And again, this is the 66 Ford Galaxy, and here it's got the custom grille and headlights. But as you turn it over, there's the Grand National Stock Car version and the factory stock version as well. And just turning it over here, this is the drag or the the NASCAR style engine. Check out those headers there; that's pretty cool. And the dual carburetor snorkels here. We also have the different wheels you can get, as well as the racing bucket seat and the steering wheel and the instrument panel, and then some custom bits for the rear end, which is also pretty cool. Now moving back to the 50s, we have the 52 Hudson Hornet convertible, another cool Mobius kit. This one is really neat. I was trying to get the hard top as well this time, but <laughs> they ran out of stock at Stevens before I was able to order it. Now I've got another Hudson that's returned. This of course is the Hudson Hornet Club Coupe from 1954. Now I do have an unboxing of this kit in the description down below. Again, a really cool one. You can check out that video. And for another 1954 Hudson that's making a return, we also have the Hudson Hornet Special. This was a different roof on the same Hudson. Again, a really cool kit. And again, one that I have unboxed in the past, so just look for that down below. Okay, we're outside, so we're going to hear some noises that aren't mine. <laughs> Here we have the 56 Ford. This one is again a, cust or a drag racer, and then you can also build the custom front end, and you can build it as stock as well. AMT always seems to give you the three-in-one kits. That one is from quite a while ago. First produced in the 60s, I do believe. And then here we have the 55 Chevy Bel Air sedan. This is a two-in-one. This one came out more in the 90s, or maybe late 80s as well. But again, really cool. There's the Chevy V8 with the hood scoop and the exhaust. Again, this was sort of partially the Chevy Nomad kit as well as the body retooled into the sedan as well as the interior and whatnot. Speaking of the Nomad, there it is. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this kit. More specifically for me to build my old version of this kit. But there it is, the drag racing version with the custom undercarriage, all chrome plated. There's the stock version as well, and those are the features you get. 
And then over here you can also build this as an El Camino. One item that is missing off this is, and I don't know what happened with AMT, and I'm probably the only guy that knows this, but the back seat has a back. It's a two-piece seat, front and back. And the back section of this seat has been missing since 1986. I don't know why AMT can't find it because it's on the parts tree, why they have it blocked off. But the idea is the seat has the same texture on it as the tailgate. So the idea with the bell or the Nomad seat is that it flipped forward and down. So you had the long cargo uh, bay in the back and that piece is missing. It drives me crazy. I wish AMT would, you know, get it in there. Okay, so now we're going into our Toyotas and we have this 1982 Toyota Celica or Celica, depending on how you want to say it. This one is a right-hand drive, not left-hand like North American, but again, it's a cool old car. This is one that I wanted in real life, but I am willing to sell it to you at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, another really cool one by Aoshima. So you know it's Japanese. This is another one that I always wanted to have, but I'm gonna sell it to you. I can, might pick one up at Christmas maybe. Another is Celica or Celica. This is the LB. This is 1977, this version. There is a 1973 version of this one. It's red. But again, a really cool one. One of my friends had one of these when I was in high school back in the 90s. And his was yellow, but it was all rusted along here. And the door was actually straight down. It wasn't curled under anymore. <laughs> That's how rusty it was. It popped the middle right off. And he was trying to sell that thing to me for next to nothing. And it was so rusted, it was just like, oh man, forget it. I don't know. I don't think I could have brought it back, you know, with my uh, auto body collision repair experience. All right. Now, this is the one. I've got two of these, so don't worry. There's two of them. So if you guys want one, I got it. This is the car that I have been waiting 40 years to get because Fujimi released it back in the day. The reason why I've been waiting is because this is my first car, and my first car actually looks like this. All right, so the story with this is that after I, you know, I bought my car secondhand, it was like tomato red and like yellow and everything because it was a parts car and somebody had rebuilt it or whatever, poorly rebuilt it. And I ended up getting it and I repainted it the purple and everything you saw there. And I've been on the hunt for this model for 40 years. And in the Fujimi catalog, when I went to my hobby shop, my local hobby shops before I owned my own, before I owned Monster Hobbies, they had this in the catalog, the Fujimi catalog. And I tried to order it, like this is in the 90s, right? I tried to order it and the guy was like, oh, well, you know, nobody wants that kit and I gotta get it all the way from Japan. And they don't even import it into Canada and all this, these stories, right? I don't know if it was true or not. This one is a 1972, by the way. This, the, so the Toyota 11 is also known as a Corolla, 2TC in Canada. Oh, this one is, it's the right side of the steering wheel. Awesome. So anyway, so I tried to order this thing for years and I always got the story, oh, well, you know, we can't get it in Canada, blah, 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 and some other crap. I've ordered this back in the 90s, came out to Alberta, tried to get it in the 2000s, tried to get it in 2010, whatever else, and everybody, oh no, I can't get to the blah, blah, blah. So finally, Fujimi re-released it, and this time around, Stevens had it, and I ordered two. I might be getting more later on. And I want to build this just like that purple one there. See, that, that was sort of the, the color mine was in, that orangey red whatever originally. It had a yellow hood, and the guy had gotten a front end collision and the guy straightened it kind of back. He had hood pins in it. One was like three inches in this way. The other was like an inch and a half that way because the front end was out of whack. My dad and I straightened that up with a big crowbar two by four thing with wood on it. <laughs> Got it all back into shape. But anyway, this is my first car. So I'm going to build it exactly like how I had it. So again, that is the cool one that I wanted to show you that I've been waiting forever for. Sometimes you guys, I know you ask me, oh, do you have like a four-door Chevelle from 1967 and a half and all this stuff? Or like my dad's Buick Riviera with uh, six doors on it. And like uh, it was a station wagon that had wings and all this other stuff. And of course, no one's making that. But 
They might someday, so just hang on, maybe you'll get it. Anyway, that is my story, and that's all I have for the new models that have come in. Don't forget to check out the other models we have in stock, and we'll see you in the next video. So one of the things that's been keeping me busy this summer is I've been working on this shed back here. I uh, took down my old tin one. And with the help of my two daughters and my wife and my friend James, who has some construction experience, we were able to build this cool shed. The thing is, I'm still working on it. I've got a few more things to do, like uh, there's a window up there that needs to be covered. <laughs> but we put in the door, we put in all the framing and all this other cool thing. So I'll just take you on a quick little tour of this. And the uh, this is the reason why I haven't really been making YouTube videos so much in the summer. It's because I've got to, you know, I'm, I'm a few steps behind and I've got to do a few things to get a few steps ahead again so I can have a bit of balance. And I think I'm going to be trying to do these unboxing videos and whatnot as we get a little more into September and once school starts and the kids are in school and everything can start settling down again. But this is one of those big projects I've been trying to do for years and now it's almost done. So here is the new shed and we've got our door there, which was a steel door from my friend John. And then the, the front here, that green, is actually the grass from my wargaming tables. There's the four wargaming tables on each end. And then up top I've got this vent right there and I drilled three holes in there and then I screwed that on. And that's got louvers, so hopefully it won't uh, get wind in there. This whole thing is eight feet tall and that'll give me ample room on the inside to store things. The other cool thing we did in here, oh, you can hear the echo, is that we put hardwood flooring in. Now this is hardwood flooring that I got from our recycle center. Somebody was throwing away four boxes of this, plus some extra boards, so this is my first ever uh, hardwood floor. Whoops, I think I had my finger on the zoom there. This is my first ever hardwood floor. I laid it in myself with the help of my daughters. And uh, I did screw it in at the foot near here where the door comes in. That's just to lock this edge in, but the rest is free floating. And then our walls in here, I'm gonna end up using some of the pegboard from the old hobby shop. And I'm gonna put that all right in here. This is all our framing. This is the stuff that James and I did. And then this is my old board gaming tables, what it looked like underneath, which almost is like shelves on their own. There's the vents from up top. Again, a lot of work in here. I just got to finish off above the window there and then uh, go in here with the pegboard and whatnot. There's all this brown stuff in the middle here that's all caulking to not let light in. I've got some nice weather stripping in here, which is going to go around that door frame. Oh, pretty bright. Now, hang on a minute. I also put in this door. The back side of John's door here is actually pretty rusty, so I'm going to have to grind that down. But it is a steel door. So again, that's nice. Little couple little mis uh, issues with it. But I put on this doorknob today. That's got the lock on the inside as well as the outside. A little bit of a tight squeaky fit, which I hope will correct itself over time. I also put in that, chisel, chisel it in, drilled it into the stud, and then we also have our hinges up in here. So again, a really nice shed, and thanks for everyone for helping me with it. All right, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.